A few days ago, I came across a post asking, sincerely wondering, why is nobody using Hanyuan video? The main complaints were that image to video isn't great, movements are stiff, and prompt adherence is poor. After all, following the release of Huan Yuan video, the WAN series models, such as WAN 2.1, WAN 2.2, and WAN Animate, offered higher quality, better features, and a more mature ecosystem. After about a year, the Tencent Hunyuan team has released Huan Yuan Video 1.5. This is a lightweight foundational video generation model with only 830 million parameters, much less than the 1.3 billion parameters of version 1.0. The official documentation claims several technological innovations, including a brand new lightweight architecture and sparse spatial temporal attention mechanism, improved motion coherence and significantly enhanced Chinese and English prompt understanding, faster inference and significantly reduced VRAM usage. In simple terms, the goal of this model is clear. Rather than focusing on the ultimate video quality, it aims to stay in the top tier regarding visual performance, motion coherence, and semantic adherence with a key objective of lowering the hardware requirements as much as possible so that users with consumer-grade GPUs can also enjoy the experience a wise move. Huan Yuan Video provides quite a few model variants. Based on usage, they can be divided into text-to-video and image-to-video, based on optimal target resolution, into 480p and 720p. Besides the base models, there are CFG distilled versions for faster inference. The official team also offers video super-resolution models for upscaling to 720p or 1080p. Community versions exist in GGUF quantized format to further lower GPU usage. Two text encoders are needed. Interestingly, Tencent's Huan Yuan Video uses Alibaba's Quen 2.5 VL for this purpose, while Bai T5, being much smaller, is mainly used to optimize bilingual prompt processing. The clip vision model is the familiar SIG clip underscore vision underscore patch 14 underscore 384, previously used in Flux Redux. The VAE used is a new version released alongside Huan Yuan Video 1.5, supporting 16x spatial and 4x temporal compression. To use the Huan Yuan Video 1.5 model in Comfy UI, you need to upgrade the core to version 0.3.71 or newer. If your workflow template library is recent enough, you can search for who in you in video and find both text to video and image to video workflows. Let's start with text to video. Loading the workflow. The native video workflows in Comfy UI are very straightforward. Most workflows can be divided into a few parts, loading the model, setting target resolution and frame count, filling in positive and negative prompts, sampling, decoding, and finally saving as video. First, in the load diffusion models node, select the model. Here, I'll use the 480p FP16 text-to-video model, which is about 18 gigabytes, not too much for my 16 gigabytes VRAM RTX 5080 machine. Next, load the two clip models. By T5 is just over 200 megabytes, but the Quen underscore 2.5 underscore VL model is quite large, so I chose the FP8 version, which is about half the size. Be sure to select Hunyuan underscore video underscore 15 for the type. Use Hunyuan video 15 underscore V as the VAE. The official documentation provides recommended resolution combinations. Since I chose the 480p model, I set the resolution to 848 by 480 to generate a landscape video. The frame rate of Huanyuan video 1.5 is 24 FPS, unlike 1 2.2 16 FPS. Therefore, to generate a 5 second video, you need 24 times 5 plus 1 is equal to 121 frames, not 16 times 5 plus 1 is equal to 81. I entered a Chinese prompt. Who in you in video 1.5 handles both Chinese and English prompts very well. When it comes to writing prompts, the official documentation provides an English manual and a complete set of system instructions for large language models. This includes detailed recommendations on structure, grammar, tone, and word choice. I added two nodes and mia nodes to use these system instructions as templates for generating prompts for both text-to-video and image-to-video. I will demonstrate this later. There's no negative prompt provided in the official inference script, and the comfy UI template workflow also leaves it blank, so we'll leave it empty as default. The workflow includes a disabled cache node. I personally feel it can noticeably speed up processing but at significant cost to image quality. I'll show a comparison later. There are two VAE decoding nodes. The default decoding is fast and effective but consumes more VRAM if you encounter out-of-memory errors, 
you can switch to the tiled decoding node, which trades time for memory, though the stitching may introduce quality loss. Finally, use the Create Video and Save Video nodes to output and save the finished product. Don't forget to set FPS to 24. The sampling node is actually a subgraph. Clicking it will reveal all the related sampling nodes. The workflow exposes all parameters for simplicity. The workflow contains a note with the official recommendations. Since we are using the non-distilled 480p model, set shift to 5, CFG to 6. There's some debate regarding the number of steps. Comfy UI suggests 20 steps, but the official recommendation is 50. In my tests, 20 steps gave noticeably inferior results compared to 50. I fixed the seed at my favorite number, 77. The sampling method and scheduler are left at their defaults, Euler plus simple. Click Run. After about 16 minutes, here's the result. Although the hair was a bit messy, the girl's movements and expressions were quite good. At the end of the video, the four Chinese characters appeared as requested in the prompt. I switched the prompt to the equivalent phrase in English and kept other settings unchanged before running again. Subjectively, the result with the English prompt was a bit worse, the background and details were less refined. However, since it was a single test run, it's hard to say if this was due to translation or the seed value. I switched back to the Chinese prompt and continued comparing models and parameters. Switching to the distilled model, note that this version only distills the CFG, not the steps. So when adjusting parameters, you must not change the number of steps, regardless of whether you used 50 or 20 before, just set CFG down to 1. For reference, if you're used to using multi-stage samplers, like res underscore 2s, Generally running 25 steps can achieve or even surpass the results of running 50 steps with Euler, though each step takes a bit longer and the total time is roughly the same. Keep all other parameters the same and click Run. The distilled model is significantly faster. This time it took about 8 minutes. I was very satisfied with the finished product, movements, expressions, text, all were flawless. I personally prefer the GGUF format. Q6 underscore K and Q8 models are, in theory, close to FP8 and FP16 in quality, but the file size is about half. In the workflow, add a GGUF model loading node, select the 480p text to video GUF Q8 model, and click Run. Oh no, the video quality was terrible, the reason was that I forgot to change the CFG back from 1, for the distilled model, to the correct value. After changing CFG back to 6 and rerunning, the time required was similar to the FP16 model, about 16 minutes. The finished video was now a proper, completely acceptable version. I put together the final results from each model, including model size and runtime, for comparison to help you decide which version you prefer. Back to the workflow, let's look at the disabled Easy Cache node. Unlike the T Cache node we've used previously, Easy Cache is a simpler, native caching mechanism in Comfy UI. However, its effectiveness in this workflow is mixed, so I tried several parameter combinations to test it. First, I used the default settings, a threshold of 0.2, range of 0.15 to 0.95. This skipped 31 out of 50 steps, resulting in a much faster process, but the video quality was terrible. Next, I reduced the threshold to 0.1 with the same range, skipping 27 steps. Still not acceptable. I suspected that skipping detail adding steps in the latter half would harm final quality, so I adjusted the range to 0.15 to 0.5, ending halfway through. This skipped only 8 steps, with a speed increase of roughly 1.19x, but overall image quality was still noticeably lower, not worth the trade-off. You may need to experiment to find the right balance between performance and quality, which may be why Comfy UI disables this node by default. Earlier, I mentioned that the official release includes a highly complex set of prompt instructions. To make it easier for everyone to use, I've integrated them into the Mianodes plugin. Let me show you how it works. As you can tell from the Mian in the name, this plugin is developed and maintained by me and features many practical functions. You can install it with one click via the manager. In the workflow, add a Huanyu and video text to video prompt generator node. This node needs to call the API of a large language model platform. The plugin supports various platforms, including Zipu, SiliconFlow, Gemini, 
and more. For this demonstration, I'll use Silicon Flow. Most models deliver good results. Here I'll use the default free version of GLM4. Connect the node output to the positive prompt input, then hook it up to a show anything node to display the results. I provided a very simple initial instruction. I want to generate a video of a rabbit swimming inside a crystal ball. After clicking Generate, the LLM expands the instruction into highly detailed prompts. The final result looks like this. It really is a lively big rabbit, though the tail goes slightly out of bounds. In addition to the video generation model, the official release also provides video upscaling models for 720p and 1080p, specifically designed to upscale the generated video quality. Enable the previously disabled upscaling process in the workflow. My goal is to upscale a 480p video to 720p. In the Diffusion Model section, select the corresponding 720p SR model. For the latent upscale models, load the one targeted for 720p to ensure the resolution matches the model. Personally, I find that Easy Cache doesn't make much difference in the upscaling process, so it can stay enabled. If you're dissatisfied with the results after upscaling, you can try disabling it. Set the target size to 1280 by 720. Note that the sampling node here is a subgraph, you can open it and see for yourself. Generally, we only adjust the first parameter, which is the actual sampling steps. For the 720p SR model, 6 steps are recommended, for 1080p, use 8 steps. If you don't mind longer processing times, you can increase the number of steps for better detail. Click Run, and the upscaling process takes about 60 seconds. Comparing the output 720p video with the original 480p version, the detail improvement is very noticeable. This workflow, first generating a small size such as 480p video and then upscaling, is very practical. It's faster and requires less GPU capability than generating 720p or 1080p video directly. That's it for text-to-video generation. Next, let's look at the image-to-video workflow. First, load the image-to-video workflow. The first step is also to select the appropriate model. Pay attention, image-to-video models are named with I2V, don't pick the wrong one. Image-to-video requires one additional clip vision model to convert the input image into a vector. I've uploaded this image, a hand holding a cookie, about to feed it to Kirby on the computer screen. Adjust the image size to 480 by 848 then pass it to the downstream nodes for prompt generation and latent space encoding, followed by further sampling. The sampling node settings are essentially the same as for text-to-video. I'll set the steps to 50 again for better results. If you want to manually write prompts, first clarify the key entities in the scene, then describe the actions in chronological order. To save effort, I'll use the Mienodes prompt generator, just switch to the image-to-video version. Since image-to-video prompts need to incorporate image data, add a node from the Comfy UI caption this plugin using Florence 2 to caption the scene and connect its output to the prompt generator. In future updates, Mianodes will directly support Vision LLMs. After wiring everything, enter a brief instruction, eat cookie. Leave the other settings unchanged and run the workflow. This process takes about the same time as 480p text to video, with sampling completing in 16 minutes. The result is excellent, Kirby walks forward two steps, takes a bite of the cookie from our hand, and both the chewing motion and the bite mark on the cookie look natural and realistic. The usage, processing time, and output quality of the models in image to video are essentially the same as in text to video, so I won't demo each one again. To summarize, choose 480p or 720p based on desired resolution. For better quality, select FP16 models. For faster speed, use distilled models. And for GPUs with low VRAM, pick a GGUF model. That covers the topics I wanted to present for now. As for the Huanyu and video model, there will definitely be further updates, including improvements in generation speed or quality. But the model's positioning won't change. It's a powerhouse for consumer GPUs, great motion and text handling, native 24 frames per second, with official upscalers available. The drawback is that image quality is slightly lower than WAN 2.2, speed could be faster, and its ecosystem isn't very mature yet. That's all for today's video. If you found this content helpful, please consider liking, supporting, or sharing. All the models, plugins, and workflows mentioned are listed in the description, feel free to grab them. See you next time.